In our last episode, we found Edwin's missing key, killed the traitor Bronx, who was responsible for taking it, stole a stash of adulterated buff out that the Blood Eagles used to scramble the minds of their own people, and killed one of the three bosses of the Blood Eagles called The Blood, who was having lunch at Bloody Frank's. We continue to weaken the Blood Eagles Raider faction. But before we confront their leaders, we need Edwin's Raider gang on our side. We learned from Beckett that Edwin is not doing very well, and really the day-to-day -day operations of his Raider gang have fallen to his niece, Ronnie. It's really Ronnie who's asking us for help before she and Edwin's gang will be ready to face the Blood Eagles with us. And yet, she still loves her uncle. She doesn't really want to depose Edwin, and so even if he rules in name only, we are still ostensibly doing missions for Edwin. Our latest mission is to retrieve his lost dog. Beckett said the dog's name was Noodles, and he pointed us to Johnson's Acre. We've been to Johnson's Acre before, but we've never explored it in a lore video, so might as well tackle it now. When we arrive, we see that Johnson's Acre has changed. The Mothman cultists have moved in and have turned it into a shrine to the Mothman. We approach from atop a nearby ledge and we can use this height to our advantage. His eyes burn like fires in the night and no enemy will escape the sight. At last, I ascend. Holy Mothman! It's nothing. Holy Mothman, take me. We ran on over to the eastern side of Johnson's Acre to finish off the cultists. Over here we find a staircase that wraps around and leads to the top of a large rock pile. At the very top we find a power armor frame. I've seen Raider power armor and T-51B power armor on this thing. And here we see that the pre-plague Raiders of Appalachia had an interesting experiment rigged up. We find traps attached to plungers, and on top of them are pre-war human skeletons. If we activate a plunger... Oh! The trap tosses it over the ledge! That wasn't very satisfying, let's try this again. And there we go! That one was a lot better. And one more... <laughs> Never gets old! We find a box back here where the pre-plague raiders had been gathering all of the skeletons they were using to amuse themselves up here. And we find a cultist blade lying on top of a barrel fire. Behind the barrel fire is a skill level zero locked box safe. And on the other side of the box filled with all of the skeletons is a skill level one locked ammo box. Tossing skeletons over the side doesn't seem like something the Mothman cultists would do. They're so deranged that I don't think they would be able to take any pleasure from something so absurd. Plus, we know this was done by the pre-plague raiders because we found this rigged up before the Mothman cultists came by, before Wastelanders was published. Hopping down from the rock, we can move behind the shack to see if we can find this lost dog. There's an outhouse with candles in it, coffins behind the shack, and we find a new Mothman shrine here. Candles lit beneath a number of Mothman effigies. Moving around to the door of the cabin, we find a weapon mod lying on a barrel next to a weapon bench. Near to this is a skill level zero locked toolbox, and on a table out front, we find a holotape, chapter seven. Yes, about time. Chapter 7. Constructing the effigy. Gather 10 to 20 bundles of sticks underneath the new moon. Bind them tightly with the entrails of the sacrificial beast and cleanse and bless your tools with holy incense. Construct the form of your effigy with the bundles using straw or twine to fix them into position. Plant a staff of hewn oak down the center of the effigy. Hammer the staff firmly into the dirt and pile more sticks, logs, and wood scraps around the base. Anoint your sacred blade with the holy oil made from the bright one's eggs and use your blade to bless the effigy for use in your circle. Interesting. 
so instructions for day-to-day -day living as a Mothman cultist. We see a number of these effigies on fire all over Johnson's Acre, and now we know how they made them. On the table just next to this one, we find a note always watching. We look to the sky, tunnel vision. We search for the one, divine, merciful, always watching. I don't think this one needs much interpretation. Clearly about the Mothman, just another example of that wonderful Mothman cultist poetry. As we continue to explore, we see a mole rat nearby. Let's kill it. Wait, wait a minute. Noodles! Noodles wasn't a dog. He was a mole rat the whole time, and he's diseased. And now that I think about it, remembering what Beckett said, well, I'm not sure yet. I'm hoping some of my contacts will give me an idea while you're grabbing the... Uh, dog. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I think its name is Noodles. I... I'm 60% sure of that. Anyway, uh, good luck. I think Beckett knew he was a mole rat. Oh, great, Beckett. Making us get this stupid mole rat. Well, we might as well set him free. And he scampers off back to Edwin. Well, we're gonna have to have some words with Beckett when we get back to camp. To finish off Johnson's Acre, we can head inside the cabin. Near to the fireplace, we can find a magazine. I found a copy of Robco Fun with the Pipfall game. And then on a side table by the couches, we find a hollow tape that was here before Wastelanders taking a chance. I had just gotten back from my pre-dawn hunt when the bomb hit. I could see the mushroom cloud from the front window of the house. The way the window framed the explosion was strange. It was almost like it wasn't really happening. It was too perfect. Too beautiful. Uh, luckily, Johnson's Acre was too remote to be damaged, but I'm betting it won't be long before I start feeling the effects of the radiation. Whether I want to or not, I'm going to have to travel to Charleston to try and gather supplies before they're all gone. Damn it. If I'd only brought more than a weekend's worth of food, I could have stayed here where it's safe. If you're listening to this message, um, that probably means I found somewhere else to lay low. Or I never made it at all. Maybe having a roof over your head for the night will give you hope. God knows we can all use a little bit of that right now. We learned that he left and went to Charleston. In a previous live stream, I actually went to Charleston to see if I could find any evidence of Adam, but I couldn't find anything. I think this is all the evidence we ever get of him. We never know if he made it. That's it for Johnson Zaker. With Noodles safe, we can head back to Beckett, who I bet is probably cackling at us right now. So when Ronnie said dog, what she meant was a freaking mole rat? Seriously. Well, I'm sure it'll uh, find its way home, Dad, when now that you've freed it. <laughs> but in the meantime, I've heard the Blood Eagles have recruited a mechanic named Star. And they plan to have her help take over a radio station. We can't let that happen. Annoyingly, even though Beckett gave us the clear impression that he knew that Noodles wasn't a dog when he gave us the quest, we don't find an option to confront him about it. Instead, we can get details about the next mission. We can start by saying, know anything about this star person? She joined up about two weeks before I did. She's so amped, they didn't even need to juice her up with the buff out to mess with her mind. I once saw her kick a defenseless woman off of a cliff. I mean, who the hell does that? She needs to fall. <laughs> Hard. How will a radio station help the Blood Eagles? Yeah, if the Blood Eagles get a radio station up and running, they can literally broadcast their threats across Appalachia. Everyone who hears the message will either run away or join up to avoid being killed. We can pass an intelligence check of eight to say, if they get that radio working, we could drastically decrease their signal to noise ratio using a burst jammer. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure everything you just said made perfect sense to you, but uh, all I heard was blah, 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 blah. Uh, <laughs> how about you just stick the burst jam in a bullet into Star's skull? Hmm, that should do the trick. Uh, okay, it doesn't seem that Beckett wants to play ball there. So, Star needs to die. Got it. Yeah, it's the only way. Want anything before you head out? 
So how's Sage doing? Has he visited lately? Well, other than the creepy note, not really. Though I know he'll be back. He always is. He's probably talking to the rocks again. His response here was confusing because we don't actually find a note from Sage in our camp. And also, the subtitles here disagree with what he says. So my best bet is that Sage was supposed to leave a note, but they ultimately cut that, changed the subtitles, but forgot to change the audio. Anyway, moving on, we can say, have you heard back about Edwin's gang? No, and it's kind of freaking me out. I was getting regular messages from Ronnie, and suddenly they've stopped. I have a feeling something big is going down over at their camp, but well, we can't worry about that now. I'll be back. You'll be back after these messages, right? That's uh, what I what I heard people used to say all the time. With that, we begin the quest, Shooting Star. Kill Star, the Blood Eagles mechanics expert. This quest sends us to the Seneca Gang Camp, just south of the Atlas Observatory. When we arrive, the Blood Eagle Raiders are playing music, but the music doesn't last for long. <laughs> There we go. Star is dead. She was the one without a helmet that we killed through the scope. We find her in pieces on the ground. But while we're here, let's explore the camp. We find a power armor station with power armor on it near to a staircase. It's good for the fusion core. The power armor on it is all really low level. We find a number of containers, duffel bags, piles of wood, a cooking station, hanging radstag, a number of recipes lying out on some tables. We see that the raiders have converted a ski lift gondola into a toilet. How's that for privacy? Just next to this, we find what appears to be a pre-war fat man crate with a chem box on top. Next to this is a makeshift table next to a weapon mod. And on the table is a brand new holotape, Blood Eagle Oath. Smash the weak beneath our feet. Prepare for a war, bathe in gore. Blood Eagles, have no fear. Blood Eagles, just want your ears. <laughs> because fear rhymes with ears. Kind of. Gotta love raider poetry. On the ground nearby, we find a red end of dungeon steamer trunk. Near to this is a supply shelf, which has some water and Nuka-Cola inside. We can take a staircase up to the very top of this sniper's roost, where we killed the guy playing the banjo. Here he lies in his chair. We find Nuka-Cola by a radio and an ammo box in the corner. That's it for the Seneca gang camp. And Star is dead. So heading back to Beckett, we can tell him the good news. So, Star's no longer with us, I assume? <laughs> good. Well, honestly, I'm really glad you're back. Ronnie is desperate for our help. Turns out Edwin's much sicker than everyone thought, and, well, I don't think he's fit to run their gang any longer. And we care because... Uh, <laughs> hello? Anyone in there? <laughs> I don't know how many times I have to explain this. If we want to finish off the Blood Eagles, we need Edwin's gang to help us out. How did Edwin get so sick? Uh, I'm not sure. His health has gone downhill since coming to Appalachia. Probably because he insisted on hanging around the ash heap. We find yet another option to flirt with Beckett by saying, Edwin's gang probably needs someone stronger, more courageous. Maybe you should take over his gang. <laughs> uh, as much as I uh, appreciate the compliment, uh, I think that would be the wrong move. Ronnie deserves to take Edwin's place. Well, what can we do to help? Uh, I was thinking about that. Well, there was a Saddler family that came to Appalachia looking for treasure a while back. And they uh, brought their Miss Nanny with them. They uh, don't need it anymore. I was thinking, maybe Ronnie could use it to help with Edwin. Is the Miss Nanny still functional? Honestly, I have no idea if it's still working, or if someone's wandered by and 
decided to strip it for parts. Why doesn't the Settler family need their bot anymore? Because they're all dead. I, uh, I killed them. I killed them all for their chems and a couple of caps. It's a memory I wish I could forget. Jeez, Beckett. We can pass a charisma check of four to say, well, well. So there is a heart buried under all of that raider bravado. Don't say stuff like that or I'll be forced to restore my bad reputation by kicking a cat or something. <laughs> oh, in all seriousness, uh, Edwin doesn't deserve to go out like that. I mean, he was uh, a buddy and I want to do everything I can to make amends with the guy. I'll go get this robot for Edwin, but this had better work. Well, if it doesn't, we just have to move on without them. Maybe we can convince Meg to help us? How do you remember where the settlers were? I remember this place well. Do I deserve the... memories replaying in my mind? Reliving what I did there? Probably. But I gotta forgive myself, too. Not entirely, but... Enough. He's gotta forgive himself. Okay, sure. But what about the family of the people he murdered? Can they forgive him? Well, tell me about this Miss Nanny. Well, I don't know much about the thing. Even though it seemed attached to the family, you know, it didn't try to fight back when I, um... When I killed everyone. You know, when I, uh, put it all together, the Miss Nanny, the, the chems... The family must have been sick. I murdered sick, innocent people in cold blood. Well, this is what addiction does to you. You know, how the blood eagles strip away your humanity. Now, they need to die. All of them. Jeez. I'm tempted to say something really judgmental here because that's a really awful thing, but gosh. Beckett's already so hard on himself. I get the impression that he really does regret what he's done. And if he had been in his right mind, he would have never done it. This won't take long, Beckett. I'll be back soon. Good. Well, in the meantime, I'll uh, put out some feelers for information on the rest of the Blood Eagle's leadership. With that, we complete the quest Shooting Star and we begin the quest Bot of Gold. Rescue the Miss Nanny robot for Beckett. The end of the rainbow where we find this Bot of Gold is Garahan Mining. Why settlers wanted to camp out here, I'll never know, because it's, you know, swarming with super mutants and sentry bots. <laughs> I covered Garahan Mining in extreme detail in a multiple video series dealing with the pre-war company and all the goodies we can find here. You can watch that series by clicking here. But inside the Garahan Mining headquarters, we can clear the place of murderous robots. until we reach the very bottom and back of the lab. Heading out the lab doors, we find the section that exposes the rock walls, and after clearing the robots, we find one robot that's not hostile. This is the settler's Miss Nanny, whom the other robots apparently held captive, and we can set her free. Yes, dearie? With a simple French-flavored yes, dearie, she scoots away. I guess she already knows exactly where to go. Once done, we can head back to Beckett and tell him that we found the bot of gold. Shit. Oh my god. Oh, I'm glad you're back. Oh, I've got some news you need to hear. Whoa! Everything okay? No. Not okay at all. What's wrong? Look, I'm still trying to wrap my head around it. Out with it! What's the news? Yeah, no, sorry. I, it's just, just... This is heavy for me. It's Frankie, my kid brother. I told that idiot to leave Foundation and hide, but he wouldn't listen. And now the Blood Eagles have him, 
and I don't know what the hell I'm gonna do. This is all my fault. Beckett, slow down. Why do they have your brother? Slow down? Why? Don't you get it? They're gonna torture him to get to me. Okay, look. First, they kill your heart. They make you forget everything you love. And when you're the most vulnerable, they mess with your brain. Where is he? I have no idea. Look, all I know is he's gone. And I don't know what they're doing to him. We can pass a charisma check of eight to say, you must really love your brother to be so worried. You're damn right. He's all I've got, okay? And I've watched out for that stupid kid ever since... Ever since our father was killed, leaving us both alone. Yeah, no, I know. Sounds like a typical boo-hoo sob story, but it's true. I'll take care of this, Beckett. <sighs> You're a real friend. You truly are. Okay, Beckett, breathe here. Come on, let's see. Let's see, he's a smart kid. I mean, he'll, he'll escape on his own, right? I mean... No. No. God damn it! Oh my god. I just keep imagining the terrible things they're doing to him. I, uh... Oh god, I can't think. I can't think. Do you think Frankie would willingly join the Blood Eagles? Frankie? <laughs> no, 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 there's no way. They're holding him for leverage. Plain and simple. And, 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 and now that their buff-out supply is gone, God knows how they're gonna mess with his mind. Well, at least you know they'll keep him alive. The way the Blood Eagles torture their prisoners, he'd be better off... Oh, man. I can't believe I'm even thinking stuff like that. Now, we gotta get him out of there. Snap out of it, Beckett. Think! Phew. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're... you're right. I can't let this get to me. Think. I need... to think. Wait, wait. I got it. Okay, I know what we need to do. Okay, the Blood Eagles have another leader. Uh, some sicko they call the Eye. Okay, he's the gang's uh, information extractor. Okay, you need to find him. He's elusive, but I know where he does some of his worst shit to people. It's a place they call the Lab. You ever been to the Lab? Yeah, I was there once. I'll never forget the stench of that place. Smelled like death, come to think of it. I remember seeing a bunch of holotapes there. The Eye, uh, he liked to record his... Uh, sessions. Huh? You may want to grab whatever you find. We can pass a strength check of four to say, I promise you, if they've harmed Frankie in any way, I'll rip them apart with my bare hands. Thank you, friend. I knew I could depend on you to have my back. Just do what you need to do and come back safe. I don't want to lose you to those maniacs. I'll find the eye, but what are you going to do? I'll head to Foundation. See if I can get a hold of some of Frankie's friends or rummage through his stuff. I'll see what I can turn up. Need anything before you head out? Tell me about your brother. <laughs> Frankie was a... <clears throat> is... a good kid. I knew things were going rough for me, so I left him with some settlers. I didn't know he'd come down to Appalachia. When I heard he was living in Foundation, I thought, maybe, you know? Maybe he'll be safe with them. I didn't tell anybody about him being there. I, <clears throat> you know, I knew someone would use it against me. I don't know how they found out. You sure the Eye will have information on Frankie? Well, it's not like the Blood Eagles keep a lot of records. Um, everybody moves around a lot, and there isn't that much structure outside of the leadership. It might be a gamble, but it's the best chance we've got. We can again flirt with him by saying, Beckett, I'm really sorry about your brother. I just wanted you to know that I'm here for you if you need me. Thank you. I really think I needed to hear that. Oh, you know, if you weren't here, I, I don't know what I'd do. I'll see what I can find. I'll be back. Just hurry. There's no telling how long my brother will be able to hold out. 
With that, we begin the quest, Sibling Piracy. Search the Eyes Lab for any sign of Beckett's brother. We discover that the Eyes Lab is at The Vantage, a pre-Wastelander's location that is now a Blood Eagle's den. If we fast travel to the Vantage, we arrive on a vantage point overlooking the Vantage, making it easy to snipe them off. This, however, was just a guard post. After clearing the guard post, we can scale it, loot the containers at the top, and then turn south towards the main camp to pick off the others. Should be the boss. <laughs> I really should. You're gonna be With that, we clear the camp. I was a little perplexed by this place because Beckett really talked it up to be some sort of experimental lab where they produced a bunch of chems, but we don't really find any of that here. We don't find any chemistry equipment or any evidence that they're producing chems here. We don't even find anyone named The Eye here, unlike the Blood whom we killed at Bloody Frank's. I kind of expected a bit of a pre-war medical facility we could explore. But of course it could be that the Blood Eagles used to have a lab here and maybe moved it. Perhaps they constantly move their chem-making operation and their torture operation to prevent it from becoming raided by guys like us. In the middle of the camp is the ruins of a shack with a weapons workbench inside. We find some military checkpoints and barricades here. On top of one is a skill level two locked explosives crate, and we can take a staircase leading up to the very top of a guard post in the middle of the vantage. At the top, we find a number of containers, and inside one bag is the eyes subject, Frankie. State your name for the record. I'm Frankie Beckett. My brother is one of you. Just bring him in here. He can explain everything. Drink? No, thanks. I don't do chems. My brother does them, and he's always getting hurt and sick, so I don't. If it's all the same to you, no thanks. Okay. I don't feel okay. Finish it. Is that an eye? Those are eyes. Oh, God. Oh, my God. <laughs> The Blood Eagles force-fed Frankie chems! They were trying to turn him, but did they succeed or did they kill him? Well, this is really tragic news that we have to deliver to Beckett. Heading back to our camp, we can tell him what we found. Oh, I see you didn't find Frankie either. Damn it. Well, Foundation wasn't a complete bust. No one knew where Frankie went, but I did find this holotape. Seems Frankie had a girlfriend. Never thought I'd live to see the day. Oh, my poor kid. I hope we can get him out of this mess, if he's still alive. Where's Sage? Don't tell me he's in another cult. <laughs> well, it's hard to say, but uh, usually when I stand outside and howl his name for an hour or so, he tends to show up. Don't worry, I won't do that while you're around. I promise. Did you find Frankie's girlfriend? Nope, just the holotape. I think maybe they kidnapped her to get to him, but... I mean, that's what they do. That's what they're doing to me right now. I, mean, I don't know. I don't know anything other than I feel like this is all... my fault. We can pass a charisma check of four to say, you may need to prepare yourself to accept his loss and move on. Look, I... I know. It's in the back of my mind all the time right now, okay? But I refuse to give up until I have proof. And I can promise you one thing. When the Frankie is dead, or, 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 or alive, we are gonna hunt down and kill as many of these goddamn blood eagles as we can. And finally we can say, I found a holotape too. It has your brother's name on it. Wait, 
This is a recording of one of the eyes sessions at the lab. I don't know if I'm ready to listen to that. You know, but I... I suppose I'll have to. Right. While I'm doing that, I need you to help out with a new problem. Words come down that the Blood Eagles are stockpiling poison to use on settlers' food supplies. We can't let that happen. With that, he gives us the holotape he found, Ayla's plans. You sure Sage will have information about Frankie? Well, see, he knows a lot of people who see and hear things differently than you and I. Sometimes those things are meaningful. So, maybe it doesn't hurt to ask. What about Frankie? He's way more important than a stockpile of poison. Look, friend, I understand the impatience, but I, I do. I do, okay? I want closure on Frankie, and I want to watch the Blood Eagles burn. See, the thing is, I need to be a better person, too. Okay, I used to be one of the brainless maniacs that would poison these innocent people with glee. Okay, but today, I decided to be a decent person. Who's going to help some settlers live to see another day? All right, and I asked my friend to help. I'll go grab the poison so they can't use it on anybody else. All right, sounds good. After I listen to the recording, I'll keep looking for Sage. I could use his uh, sense of humor right now. Why would the Blood Eagles poison innocent people? <laughs> you, you might as well ask me, why is it bright when the sun shines? Okay, the Blood Eagles are insane. All right, after they plant the poison, they'll probably hide nearby just to watch the settlers die one by one. It's a game to them. You know, this could just be a distraction to throw us off Frankie's trail. Actually, I hadn't thought of that. Damn. Well, we'll just have to see it through. We can't miss any opportunity to find him. Just be careful, okay? I'll be back soon with an armful of deadly poison. Aww, that's the sweetest thing anybody ever said to me. With that, we complete sibling piracy and begin the quest, Needs of the Many. Retrieve the poison supply. Next, we can listen to the holotape Beckett gave us, Ayla's plans. Frank, you goof. You said you'd be back yesterday, and I gotta go into Foundation for a while to take care of my mama. Then I'm going to one of them vaults around here and look for gold. I heard they had bars of it. When I get back, I'm gonna buy one of them vault tech camps. And I'm going to set up a nice farm with some Brahmin and Tatoes. I talked with Grom about it, and he said he'd stop by. Said he likes stopping by those places now. Heck, maybe. I don't know. Maybe we can convince your brother to leave the stupid loser gang he's in and stay with us instead. Remember you told me that he used to talk about opening up a bar? Well, maybe that's how we can get him out. We just have to remind him that capitalism is waiting. He just has to quit that gang of maniac communists and get some gold. I'll be back with the gold when I can. Love you, bunches. Frankie never came back to Foundation because he had been kidnapped by the Blood Eagles. But then his girlfriend, Ayla, left the Foundation to go search for gold. Wait, gold in one of those vaults? Is that what she thinks this big treasure of Appalachia is? Gold? But which vault has the gold? And to which vault did she go? Whatever happened to her? It must have been horrible, as she never came back. Beckett told us that the poison supply is at the ammo dump, a pre-Wastelanders location which is now a Blood Eagles raider den. Heading that way, we can clear the place. dump is small. There's not a whole lot to this place. Of note, we find a power armor workbench here. A power armor frame can spawn here, but it wasn't here when I arrived. There's the remains of a bonfire in the middle of the place. Human and animal skulls scattered around it. Someone had tried to turn this into a home. We find potted plants and fertilizer outside of a trailer, and a number of garden plots nearby. Though it looks like they also used the garden as a urinal. Okay. 
Heading inside the trailer, we find a footlocker by a black couch, on top of which is a woman's skeleton, and inside the footlocker is the poison supply. On the other side of the black couch is a skill level one locked box safe, and on a broken terminal on the desk, on the western side of the trailer, is a note, Carol's note. Frank, you're not gonna believe this. There's a working suit of power armor in the Monongah plant. It's out of juice, but if I can get my hands on a fusion core, I'll walk it back here myself. I think Joanne mentioned she picked up a core somewhere. I just need to come up with a convincing reason why we need it. Can't let anyone know about that armor until it's in our loving care. Carol. It appears that Carol was a Nuka-Cola fan. We find a Nuka-Cola sandwich board, empty bottles of Nuka-Cola, and behind a fan, a brand new flavor of Nuka-Cola. Nuka-Cola Cranberry. Nuka-Cola Cranberry grants a temporary bonus to earned experience, quenches 15% of our thirst, and heals 40 hit points. We learn from the holotapes at the Kanawa Nuka-Cola plant that Nuka-Cola Cranberry was a trial product. It wasn't shipped globally, it was shipped locally. Appalachia was their test market. Nuka-Cola was trying to market this as a healthy snack beverage. They originally tossed around the idea of making this a celery-flavored drink before finally settling on cranberries, which were plentiful to find in Raleigh County, now known as the Cranberry Bog. When done with the ammo dump, we can head back to our camp, whereupon we discover that Sage is back. Oh boy, uh, heads up, here we go. <clears throat> I heard your sweet voice, Beckett. <laughs> Is it time? Look, I don't want to ask, but uh, I just have to. Sage, time for what, buddy? Oh, time for the air to breathe into us instead. Time for the rise to sun, for the memories to forget us. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, um, oh, okay, no. Nope, it's not time. All right, look, I need your help, okay? The Blood Eagles have my brother. Can you help me find him, or what? Oh, a brother found, a brother lost, or somewhere in between, perhaps? <laughs> Sage, man, I appreciate your help, okay? I, I do, but if you don't give me a straight answer, so help me, I'm gonna pull your heart out through your rib cage. What? Heart? Yes, the heart is at the key. Beckett, the answer is simple. The claw is meant for you and will be exactly where your heart left it. I don't understand, okay? W where my heart left it? Where my heart left my, my my brother? Okay, that's all you're gonna tell me, isn't it? <sighs> okay. <clears throat> Bye, I guess. Thanks. Damn it. Checking in with Sage. Come on. Just what? What? Oh, no. Blood eagles. Ah, don't like the eagle part. How about blood beagles? Yeah, I like that better. Oh, well, hello there. Have we met? Yes? No? Both? Wait, what's his name? Uh, Dreckit? No. Schmeckit? No. Fleckit? Ah, oh, my word, I... I've forgotten my good friend's name. <laughs> Blood Beagles? Well, that's what I want the next cryptid to be. Heading to Beckett, we can see if he can interpret the words of Sage. Okay, I'm just not sure if any of that was very helpful. Why I put up with that guy, I'll never know. I need to stew on what he said, I suppose. The claw is meant for you. And it is exactly where your heart left it. I know the Claw is the last of the three Blood Eagle leaders, but is meant for you? I mean, what does that mean? Who is the Claw, anyway? Uh, he's the only Blood Eagle leader I never got a chance to meet. But I heard he's the worst of the three. See, the Blood gathers the recruits. The Eye extracts valuable information, and the Claw... Oh, he just tortures for pleasure. Real stand-up kind of guy. 
How does this get us any closer to finding Frankie? <sighs> Damn to find though. Look, Sage may sound crazy, but he's never steered me the wrong way. We, we have to trust this will lead us in the right direction. I don't think it's that complicated. Sage is trying to say that you need to kill the claw. Yeah, well, I, <laughs> that's going to happen no matter what Sage says. What about the bit with the heart? Where your heart left it, he said. We can pass a perception check of eight to say, Sage is clearly giving you grief for losing sight of what's important, namely your family. <laughs> I, I think it was the chems that I took which made me forget everybody and made me forget myself. Or we can pass a charisma check of eight to say, maybe he was saying you broke Frankie's heart. When could that have happened? When I um, started going overboard with the chems, I guess. When I mixed them up with more... With poisons. With the blood eagles. Or we could pass an intelligence check of eight to say, the heart might represent love. When did you and your brother start drifting apart? When the blood told me that I would get to watch everyone I love slowly get shredded in front of my eyes. I, uh, I imagined everything I could do to stop loving anyone. I gladly overdosed on the buff out to burn it out of my heart. All I can be certain of is that the heart is referring to Frankie. It's almost as though he's tying the claw and Frankie together. As if they were... Holy shit. Holy shit, that's it. Okay, Sage was saying that Frankie is being held by the claw. This is perfect. I know exactly what we need to do. I'll grab Ronnie and track down exactly where the claw is keeping Frankie. In the meantime... I need you to hunt down and kill the eye. You think you can handle it? Oh, so the eye was someplace else. Finally, we can get rid of the eye. Is there anything else I should be looking for while I'm there? Yeah. Look for a place to dump the eye's corpse when you're done filling him full of bullets. Besides that, look for any info about Frankie. The eye is dead meat. Count on it. Look, I, uh, I can't thank you enough for everything you've done. Sticking by me like this while I bark orders at you? <laughs> Hell, you're more than just a friend to me. You're like family. Thank you. Anything you need before you go? If we never find Frankie, will you be okay? Well, what choice will I have, right? <laughs> I mean, no. No, I won't be okay. Yeah? But, uh... You know, eventually... I'll be able to carry on. Hell, I'm learning how to do all sorts of things better. I don't want to learn how to do this, but I'm preparing for it. I think it's about time Ronnie pays up. Yeah, that's why I've been biding my time. And after everything we did for her and her uncle Edwin, they owe us. Huge. Now, she'd be thrilled to help anyway. Ronnie's been a thorn in the Blood Eagle's side forever. She has got it down to a damn art. All right, Beckett. I'm off. Look, please, just be careful. All right, last thing I want to do is lose someone else that means a lot to me. With that, we complete the quest, Needs of the Many, and begin the quest, Eye for an Eye. Kill the Eye, the second leader of the Blood Eagles. We learned that the Eye is at a brand new Blood Eagle location called the Crimson Prospect. But sadly, I am all out of time. We'll pick up right here where we leave off in my next episode. I publish new Fallout videos each and every week on my channel, so if you don't want to miss the next episode, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. If you have already, but you still feel like you're missing out on YouTube notifications, consider following me on Twitter at Oxhorn. I update Twitter manually with every new piece of content that I publish. I've got a shirt shop with completely unique designs that you can't find anywhere else. My designs come on shirts in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes, and in a wide array of colors. You can find them on other products as well, like smartphone cases, pillows, posters, mugs, stickers, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming a patron on Patreon or a member here on YouTube. 
YouTube members and patrons on Patreon are becoming increasingly important as YouTube continues to make platform changes that make the future of YouTube monetization uncertain. So to all my YouTube members and my patrons on Patreon, you have my sincerest thanks. I couldn't do this without you. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with more brand new videos. Would you believe it? I've been looking all over for you. Congratulations! You are a winner of the Great Appalachian Sweepstakes! I have been authorized to deliver your prize winnings. Notice, we've updated our privacy policy. As a monthly prize winner, your name, likeness, and other personal information may be used for publication without your consent. Have a wonderful day!